this is one of the first solos I have ever learned wrong when I was a kid. I wish I had somebody putting out the effort of explaining to me all the details of the thing. So here I am doing it for you. These two solos, Felder and Walsh's, are little masterpieces of melodic lead, and they blend together at the end with harmonized triads. They're simple, but perfect for a pop song. I am Alberto Lombardi, and as in all my tutorials, I will guide you through all the right notes and techniques to play the solo as played on the record. But I will also get into a lot of the details that many people miss and that are the reason why the solo sounds so great. I will divide this into more videos, so you will find links to the other parts when they come out in the description and maybe right here too. We start with the first chorus played by Don Felder. The first lick is on a B minor chord and it starts around here, so it's not very easy to understand where exactly it starts, but it's not on the B note. Many people start on the B note and I don't think it's right. Actually, if you're watching play it live, he always starts a little before that. Let's see. As you can see, it might start from the A or the A sharp. We cannot be 100% sure about the reasoning behind this, but it could be either a random slide that starts just from the first part of the neck, like this, or it could have started from the major third of the chord where the solo starts from, which is an F sharp major, and it might have started from the third, but we don't have actually any info on that. So either of those could work. So you just start here, let's assume it's the A sharp, and just slide quickly until the 11th fret on an F sharp note. So. And this is right on the beat. Then you play an A and hammer on on a B note. And then just bend without re-picking the note. In live performances, actually, he picks the note again, but on the record it's not picked and that's a beautiful sound. And then you bend three semitones up to a D note. Then what is really interesting is that you don't want to release the band so that we can hear it. So you release it, but while you're muting the note. And you release the band. This is very important because I like that I don't hear the release of the band before the next lick comes in. And it's again A hammer on to B. And then we play an E note with the first finger. The slide, I think it's best to do with your second finger. Remember that you have to mute the string while you release the band. Then we change position and we go to the seventh fret and we start from a D, hammer on on an E, pick the E, pick the D again, because you have to bar these two notes. And then with the second finger you play an A sharp. I will not get into the details of the right hand picking because Felder's picking is quite uncommon, so it doesn't follow the alternate picking pattern and uh, Whatever works for you is great. It's not fast, it's not difficult, so whatever works best for you. Then you go to the 4th fret, and you use either your 1st and your 3rd finger, or your 1st and your 4th finger, whatever works best, and you do a little thrill. 
and then you pick the A note on the D string and you bend. A very important thing is that you have to slide back down. This sounds really good and if you don't do it you're actually missing something. And you slide down. You might have noticed that they construct the solo on a B minor pentatonic, you will see this on Walsh's solo later on, but they have to follow the harmony and they do it brilliantly with just minor tweaks to the pentatonic scale. Right here they just bend to the major third of the F sharp major chord just by bending. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, click the thumbs up so YouTube will show it to more people. Thank you. So let's move on to the next lick. This next one is over the chord of A. And it's basically still using the B minor pentatonic. So we do D, hammer on, play the F sharp, the D again, but while we play this D, we actually bend it a little bit. It's a micro band. And he does this thing the first time through where he plays the B flat. Then he will play the A note. This is a little subtle change, but it's really interesting. Then we do it again. But this time we pull off. Pull off. Then we pick and pull off again on the same two notes. Then we move on to the next lick. This one is over an E chord and it actually follows the melody by bending this G to a G sharp to follow the major third of the E chord. So we play an A, we bend it, play a D with a pinky, Play the bent B again, then release to an A, pull off to an F sharp, play the A again with the pinky, play the G with the second finger, and bend. So. I like to think of all these notes as 16 notes. So it's not like the release of the band is just one note, it's actually two. And you might want to pull off from the A to the F sharp. The next lick goes on the G chord. So there's a bunch of things that I would like to point out here. First one, be very careful to separate the two notes with the bar. You have a bar at the seventh fret and you don't want to hear, you want to hear two distinct notes. So you have to roll the finger while you play the two notes. You start with the flat finger, then you roll it to mute the note you just played and to play the F sharp. Then you go with your third finger and bend the D note to an E. Release and pick the note again. Bend again, but actually you play the note after you bent it. So there's a pre-bend. And then you pull off to the B note. Then you play an A with your third finger and you bend. And you bend it to a B. Then you play the D with your pinky. Play 
the band B again, so you don't have to release this band, you have to keep it while you play the D with the pinky. And then you release the band to the A and pull off to the G. So as you can see, we're actually following the harmony, it's not the pentatonic anymore. We have this element of the major scale, the G, which is the root of the chord we're in. Then you play the A note again, very briefly, and then you play a ghost note. This little ghost note is really important and gives the solo movement, as it often happens in solos from Gilmore as well. The ghost note could be on the B string or on the G string, possibly on the G string. Because it prepares the lick that comes next. Throughout this whole lick, it's very important that you pay attention to how he separates the notes. The notes are not all sustained, there's little spaces in between that make it very rhythmical. You can hear it's separated, the notes are separated, let's hear it from him. And the ghost note I was telling you about. Then we get into the lick on the D chord, which is separated as well. The upper E note that we pick is very short. So we play with the third finger an E at the ninth fret and we bend it. Then we play, while keeping the band, we play a D with the pinky. Then we play the F sharp again, release to the E, pull off to the D, but you have to separate the high D. Then we play a very short B note with the third finger. It's almost imperceptible, so you can think about it as a ghost note. What we do here, we start with the D note with the first finger at the 7th fret, we slide down to the 6th, and then we play the D note again, but with the 2nd finger. Like this. And then we close it with the strum with muted strings, to give it rhythm. It's like it's never losing the alternate rhythm of the song with the picking hand. Hey, if you subscribe to this channel, please activate notifications with the little bell. That's the only way that you'll be sure to find my upcoming videos when I release them. Thank you. Then we go into the E minor chord and we start with a hammer on from the D note that we pick at the 7th fret and then we hammer on on an E, then we bend twice from F sharp to G. Then we release the G, play the E, pull off, and then pick the E again. On the record he plays it like this, but live he actually makes a little change that I like. He does this, which is also nice. But on the record, then we do three times the band from F sharp to G, release, pick, pull off, and then we do the lick on the F sharp chord, which is the next, and it goes like this. which is, we pick an E, we bend it, we play this F sharp, 
Then we play an A. Then we do the same thing, but we finish with a B. So we have to bar the note from the F sharp to the B. Then we bend from an E to an F sharp, release, pull off, pick an E note and bend to F sharp. Nice vibrato and keep it until the end. And this part is over. Here comes a slow performance as a recap and for you to practice over. I appreciate if you leave a like and also ring the bell. Alberto Lombardi, ciao!